Good morning, everybody. It's Thirsty Thursday. Thirsty Thursday. I think I'm going to quench my thirst uh, at happy hour. I got a old friend from school that's in town I haven't seen in probably 25 years. Um, so pretty excited about that. Uh, be a nice way to end the day. Um, what is up with the lighting in here? It looks crazy. Why is my face look that way? There we go. And my face looking all shiny this morning. Big old glare off my bald head. Um, how's everybody doing this morning? Vince, good morning. Lee, Keith, good morning. Good to see you. Um, hope everybody's having a good week. Um, we are rocking and rolling. The real estate business right now is um, absolutely back uh, after three months of being shuttered here in Pennsylvania. Um, customers has, have, have responded well. Um, real estate agents, investors, um, contractors, everybody has responded extremely well. We are back. Real estate is back um, and better than ever in Pennsylvania. Um, so I'm super pumped about that. We've just been so, so busy. We're on track to uh, nearly double our best month ever um, this month. So um, I don't want to jinx us. Uh, there's still, as you know, in real estate, uh, the close of the month and getting your deals to the settlement table is uh, more than half the battle. Uh, but we have over 45 homes sold for this month, and we're on pace to buy another uh, 30. Um, so we're super pumped. Um, and the great part is, uh, I was talking with some folks yesterday. Matt, good morning. Just did a deal with Matt. Um, you talk about integrity. Um, Matt got a deal yesterday in a competing offer situation with us. And um, for two reasons. One, um, I just love Matt. Two, he does what he says he's going to do. And um, Matt actually was, was not the highest bidder on this property. And... Um, but the other person uh, didn't do what they said they were going to do. In a competing offer situation, you guys know in real estate, um, you need to act um, with a sense of urgency. And uh, this deal that we had, we had uh, somewhere north of 11 showings within the first two hours and had multiple offers. And the person um, that made the highest offer, um, let me pull over here, I got to fix it. I got a little um, equipment malfunction here. Uh, but I'll continue to talk while I work on this. Um, the uh, the person that made the highest offer didn't do what they were supposed to do. Um, they owed us proof of funds. Um, they needed to get the contract back to us. Um, I mean, you you have to perform as a buyer. Uh, the contract calls for it. Um, and it requires you to get a deposit within a certain amount of time that's predetermined on the contract. Um, you obviously need to settle within a predetermined amount of time. And... Um, this person was not performing, and uh, we reached out to Matt and said, hey, listen, you're a little bit lower offer than the other person, um, but we know Matt to have an extremely high level of integrity. He always does what he says he's going to do. Um, we have a very strong relationship, and he bought a property from us yesterday um, for a lower price than what other people were willing to pay. Um, but that's not the topic of the conversation here. This is all about sales and something that I've recognized and something that we utilize and are super intentional about that has a huge impact on our success. And if you do it, it will help you be more successful. If you don't, it's going to hurt your chances of closing a prospect, building a relationship and making a sale. So it's something that 20 years ago, I was in the car business, I learned, and we refer to it as pace, pace, lead. And I want to explain to you real quick what that means. Um, and uh, salespeople and, and real estate agents will be able to relate to this. Good morning, Mr. Berman. How are you? Um, you should get your hat soon. I mailed out your hat. Um, let me know when you get it. I'd love you to take a picture and post it. Um, I hope you like it. Um, sent you a We Buy Houses hat. Nice red one, fitted cap. Um, hope you enjoy it. Uh, but in sales, um, specifically real estate sales, here's typically what happens. As salespeople, we have a, a definitive direction that we want to move the process in, which is good, right? But we, 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 we have a desired end. We want to make a sale. And we know by making the sale, we need to get a certain amount of information, 
to the customer. We need to answer questions. We'll need to overcome objections. That's all 100% super important. The way that we communicate that information and the pace that we communicate that information is of equal importance to what we actually say. And I wanna give you an example of pace, pace, lead. Some, let's say a prospect would say, you know, um, just not, you know, 100% sure uh, if we wanna spend the extra money to get a little bit bigger house. Um, you know, we're really conscious about our budget. And, um, but a lot of the houses that we look at that are, you know, comfortable, we just don't love. Now, a normal real estate agent salesperson will go right into sharing with them their thoughts or opinion about that situation. Um, somebody might say, hey, you know, better to, to, to buy the bigger house now uh, if you can afford it than to buy a house that uh, you're not going to be happy with. And in three to five years, you're looking to sell again. Now you have to move, potentially change schools. You might not have enough equity in your home. Whatever the case might be, normally as salespeople, we respond immediately to a client's statement with another statement. What I'm going to teach you to do and what is, is, is uh, of, of massive value when you talk about building a relationship, we talk about having open and honest communication with our uh, clients and building trust. So when someone says that, what you want to say in return is, hey, Eric, you know what, it really seems like you guys are, are, are you know, taking this home shopping experience um, and this decision uh, very, you know, uh, um, you know you're, you're taking it seriously. And I, and I tell you what, I really compliment you for that. I see a lot of client, clients and prospects that get excited about buying a home. They rush into a decision. And then sometimes even before we get to settlement, um, they have buyer's remorse. Uh, I've seen clients back out of contracts or just, you know, maybe they go to settlement um, and they're just not comfortable with the decision that they made. And, uh, you know, I really got to compliment you and commend you um, for doing that. Um, it's obvious that you're super responsible and you've taken the right amount of time to consider what your options are. My opinion would be it may make sense for you to spend a little bit more money now, get a house that you can grow into, right? Um, and that eliminates the possibility of you going back six months, 12 months, two years from now and not loving the home that you're in and could potentially cost you tens of thousands of dollars if you don't have equity. When you pay out commissions, you buy the next home, you have to put more money down. So essentially, those two responses I gave you, I communicated the same information to the client. But what I did was I complimented them. Right? What this does is it shows that you're listening, it builds rapport, and rapport is one of those things I think is, is drastically overused um, without people really understanding what it is. And this builds genuine rapport. Genuine rapport comes from um, complimenting people, um, aligning yourself, or agreeing with them. So what I just did was a compliment, right? And what we're doing is we're making effectively what's known as emotional deposits, okay? And when you make these deposits, now when you ask a client to make a decision, hey, Chris, at this point in the process, we've looked at six or eight homes. Uh, it seems like you guys are really learning, leaning towards 123 Main Street. Um, it checks all the boxes. It seems to fit within the price point that uh, you and your wife had agreed is, 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 is um, extremely uh, affordable for you. And, uh, you know, if you're comfortable, I'm comfortable making an offer for you and uh, we can get this thing bought for you, right? So when that conversation needs to happen at the conclusion of the process or what we refer to as the close, you've heard me talking about when you run a good sales process, when you build rapport, when you have open and honest dialogue, how the close at the end of the process doesn't even feel like a close. So this comes from making deposits, pace, pace, lead. So here's what you do. Every time a client says something, whether it's an objection, they make an observation, they ask a question, you need to pause for a second and instead of just um, responding, compliment them, agree with them, or align yourself with them. So a compliment's easy, right? We just talked about it. You can actually say the words, hey, I gotta compliment you. Another way would be to agree with them. You would say, Hey, Chris, I agree. It's tough to balance 
um, you know, buying the house that is, uh, you know, below your budget and being comfortable or buying the house that's a little bit above your budget, but just feels better. Honestly, I would feel the same way if I was in your situation. By the way, here's what I would suggest based on my experience with my clients. I agreed with them. Now I'm going to lead them. I'm going to help them guide them down the path. I'm going to respond to their question. I'm going to help them overcome the objection. That's how you agree. Align yourself. It basically just tells them that, hey, I hear what you're saying. I happen to, to, to feel the same way. You and I are similar, right? Because people want to do business with people that are like them. And if you need proof of that, we choose our, 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 the people we do business with often the same way we choose our friends. Um, we don't necessarily do it um, intentional when we're making a decision about what we buy, but I guarantee you, I assure you it happens. People don't buy from people they don't like, uh, not on purpose, unless they feel that they have to. Which again, when someone's buying something because they feel like they have to, it's not an enjoyable process typically for the prospect or the client. They're doing it out of, out of, out of, out of panic. They're doing it out of um, you know, desperation. And can we make sales like that? Yeah. Can you make more commissions in those situations? Probably. But it's not a repeatable process. You can't depend on people making decisions and you making sales as a result of desperation. I, I, it's just, it's, it's not a sustainable way to make a living as a real estate salesperson. So when you align yourself with someone, you're basically going to show them and talk to them. It could be something as easy as, Hey, listen, you and I are a lot alike. I like to make sure that I've, I've examined all of my options before I make a decision. Uh, because the last thing I want to do is make some, um, you know, big investment like buying a house and then look back on it and regret it. So you and I are the same. That's how you align yourself with someone. So do this before, as you communicate with a client, each and every time you're having communication, before you say something, before you tell them something, before you share a piece of information, do one or two of those three things. First, agree with them, align yourself with them, or compliment them. Then say what it is that you need to say to answer their question or say what it is that you need to say to overcome the objection. If you start doing those things as you communicate with customers, you'll find early on in the process, you're going to start to get much, much better exchange of information. Your customer is going to knock down their walls. They're going to be more willing to be open and honest with you. And when you get to the end, you're going to close more with minimal effort. So if this is the type of thing that I'm going to be teaching during our 10 to 12 week course with John Martinez about a how to sell more real estate. This is not for real estate investors. It's not for salespeople um, in general. This is specific to real estate agent sales, how to overcome objections, how to build relationships with buyers and sellers, how to win more listings, even if you're not uh, listing it for the highest price and you're charging uh, a higher commission. These are the things that we'll cover in this 10 to 12 week course. I've posted a link in the post. Um, I have a $500 off coupon that ends today. Um, it's $500 off. You'll see the code in there at the registration. Um, I would encourage you if that and this type of training would help you um, and you see value in it and you'd like help with other objections or parts of your sales process to help you be more successful. Um, I look forward to seeing you. Take care, y'all.